In this video, you have a ringside seat at the Slugfest of the Century as two Italian heavyweight champions go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to claim the belt as the best semi-auto shotgun. In this corner, we have the king of the gas shotguns, Moretta. And in this corner, we have the king of the inertia shotguns, Benelli. All right, guys, let's have a clean fight. And Benelli, I don't want to see any finger biting. As dramatic and over the top as the Beretta versus Benelli conflict might sound, people actually get into heated arguments over which shotgun is better. You know, and they always have some crazy anecdotal evidence to back up their claims, you know, often bordering on the absurd. Car guys are constantly fighting over Ford versus Chevy, Mercedes versus BMW, and Toyota versus Honda. And in the same way, shotgun guys are constantly bickering over Beretta versus Benelli semi-auto shotguns. You know, uh, and this is a stupid thing to argue about because uh, both of these semi-auto shotguns have their own strengths and weaknesses. And at the end of the day, I have a little secret for you. They're both the same company. That's right. They're both the same company. You can't hate the management at Beretta and simultaneously love the management at Benelli because of the same damn people. Where the real difference lies is in the operating systems used to eject and load shells in these shotguns. Beretta uses a gas operating system and Benelli uses an inertia operating system. But there are some smaller differences that can make either gun seem attractive or unattractive to prospective buyers. And before I start showing you what I like and dislike about each gun, let me assure you that I have no skin in this game. I'm not sponsored by either company, and I own several shotguns from each manufacturer. The Beretta semi-auto hunting shotguns I own are the uh, 390, the A400, and an A300. The Benelli semi-auto shotguns I own are uh, the M2, two Monofeltros, and I just sold my Super Black Eagle 3. So I have extensive experience using examples of both Beretta and Benelli semi-auto shotguns. So in this video, I want to dispel or confirm a couple of myths often cited in the endless gas versus inertia gun shotgun argument. You know, and in order to, to dispel or confirm these myths, I need two shotguns that are very similar in size and weight and that are chambered in the same cartridge. So for this comparison, we'll use the uh, Beretta A400 Explore Action and the Benelli Monofeltro. Both of these guns are chambered for 3-inch 20-gauge shells. And they're specifically marketed for upland hunters. You know, any serious upland hunter would be proud to own either of these shotguns. While it's true that most clay shooters like a little bit of extra weight on their guns, most upland hunters really don't. You know, especially guys like me that walk for miles on my upland hunts. You know, since these are both upland shotguns, you know, cutting weight is a real benefit. You know, keep in mind that both of these 20 gauge guns have aluminum receivers, steel barrels on them, and wood stocks. So let's weigh these guns and see if gas guns weigh significantly more than inertia guns. Okay, so now we're going to weigh both shotguns and get an empty weight on them. First is the uh, Benelli Monofeltro. And that comes in at almost exactly six pounds. That's six pounds 
and 0.1 ounces, 0.1 ounces. So basically almost six pounds even on that one. And then we'll weigh the A400, completely empty gun. And we'll see how much the Beretta A400 weighs. That's six pounds, 0.5 ounces. So the difference in weight is four tenths of one ounce. So I guess for all intents and purposes, they basically weigh the same. So I think this myth is busted. So they're both pretty much the same weight, but what's amazing about this weight test to me is that this Beretta has a gas piston system in it. It's got the kickoff system in the stock, which basically has little tiny shock absorbers in there. And uh, it's got a two inch longer barrel than the Benelli does. You know, so, uh, and it still comes in as, at the same weight as the Benelli. So I think if they took off, if the barrels were the same size and it didn't have that kickoff system, the Beretta would probably be lighter than the Benelli. So I think this rumor's busted. You know, just because you have a gas gun doesn't mean that you have a heavier gun. You know, this rumor is obviously a holdover from the old Remington 1100 days when it was heavy. It was basically the heaviest of all the auto-loading rifles. But in modern times... This isn't true anymore, and uh, especially not with the Berettas. So both of these guns have been used extensively on quail and dove hunts this season so far, and I'm going to clean them, you know, and time how long it takes from start to finish to clean them. For your convenience, I'll speed up the video so you don't get bored with the whole process. You could see that my A400 is extremely dirty. I mean, that's that's just pure dirt on there. Is out. This thing's actually <laughs> been through a lot here, you know, between cleanings. It's uh, it's really dusty too. It's uh, been out clay shooting, a couple boxes of clay. It went through an entire dove season, shot a lot of doves with it. And uh, it's basically been uh, hiking around in the, out in the desert, up in the mountains, and out in my local hills, quail hunting, and uh, even a chucker hunt in the last couple weeks. And I have a little rack in the back of my Jeep, and I actually have the the top off my Jeep right now and I've been rolling around with this in my Jeep and it's just dusty as hell but uh, it hasn't misfired there hasn't been any issues but it's definitely time for a cleaning So now I'm going to clean up this Benelli. This Benelli's probably shot uh, about one box of clays and maybe went out two days for dove and uh, spent one day out in the field chucker hunting. So hasn't seen that much, but I'm going to clean it anyways. Okay, hey, remember how I warned you that sometimes the shotgun bolt handle doesn't want to play on Berettas and Benelli's? Well, it's like I'm going to have to use the old noose technique on it. There. 
That's how you got to remove them a lot of times. I have Berettas that do that, and I have a lot of Benelli's that do that. Now back to the cleaning. So really, as you saw in the video, realistically, the only extra step you have between cleaning a Beretta and a Benelli is just to remove this gas piston right here and spray that down. That's clean. I'm gonna wipe off the piston. Really good. You don't want any type of lubricant or film or anything on here that'll attract uh, carbon and dirt. So you're gonna gently push this piston back in, and bam, it's done. I mean. Realistically, what? That's a minute? I mean, this is the only extra part you have to clean between the Beretta and the Benelli, really. So, I mean, what a minute? <laughs> so, the people running around, I hate Berettas because it takes too damn long to clean them. I mean, really, a minute? So, the Beretta only took about one minute longer to clean than the Benelli. You know, the only extra step was to pull out the piston, wipe it off, wipe out, you know, wipe out the piston housing and put the piston back in. I mean, that's it. You know, that's what all the Benelli people go crazy over. One minute of extra cleaning time. I mean, I don't really get that. So technically, this myth is confirmed. The Beretta does take longer to clean than the Benelli. But that you have to ask yourself, is one minute really an issue? So in this portion of my testing, we're going to try to figure out if uh, gas guns cycle light loads better than inertia guns. So for this comparison, I didn't want to go with a super light hand load. I wanted to be realistic with it. You know, I didn't want to just go down to where the load is so light, no one would ever possibly use it in the field. So I'm going to be realistic in this comparison. And I'll be shooting these really weak three quarter ounce low brass loads. And this is basically the cheapest steel ammo I could find. So let's go out for a day of clay shooting at the range and See how they function in both shotguns. Pull. Pull. Well, we ended up putting over 150 rounds through each gun today. And the Benelli had one failure to eject. You know, basically... They both did great with the uh, weak-ass ammo I was using at the range, you know, and although theoretically, I guess, the gas gun should be more reliable with light loads, you know, with the Benelli's, I don't think you really see this until you start shooting the big three-and-a-half-inch guns. You know, I think most of this rumor that inertia guns don't uh, cycle light loads well I think most of that uh, 
rumor came from the old Browning Auto 5 shotguns, which were absolutely horrible about cycling light loads. You know, for the exception of my uh, Super Black Eagle I just sold, my Brennas and Benelli's both have ate up and spit out just about any ammo I fed them. So for this test, we're gonna we want to determine what the recoil levels are between these two shotguns. So I decided to use you know a a common load. I didn't want to load up something that was just outrageous. I wanted to load up something that your average upland shooter would be going out and doing some upland shooting with, and uh, see how the recoil is between both shotguns with this. You know, so for this test, we'll be firing. Uh, Kent Upland Fast Steel, and this is a 7 8 load screaming out of the barrel at 1,500 feet per second. You know, this is basically my chucker load or what I use while I'm out quail hunting in chucker country where I got a shot at chucker. So this isn't a really heavy recoiling load, but it also isn't anywhere near a light load. So this is what we're going to go to the range and shoot. Okay, so my Beretta A400 has the uh, kickoff system on it. So this really wasn't a fair comparison. So uh, we put the A400 away, and uh, I broke out my Beretta A300. This doesn't have the kickoff system on it at all. And basically went out and shot this 12-gauge A300, against my 12 gauge M2 for comparison. Okay, so uh, we went out to the foothills and we shot a bunch of guns yesterday. And uh, which one of these guns do you, th these shotguns do you think had more recoil? This one. So you thought the Benelli 20 gauge had more recoil than your Beretta 20 gauge? Yes. Was the, uh, was the, could you really feel the difference in recoil between them? Yes. Huh. So perceived recoil does indeed seem to be noticeably less with a gas design versus an inertia system. But in my opinion, they both do recoil less than a pump action shotgun and far less than an over and under does. And almost anything you shoot out of a 20 gauge anyways, with either the Beretta or the Benelli, is going to be really comfortable to shoot. So this test was kind of an eye opener for me because I think what really impresses me isn't the gas versus inertia recoil difference. What really impresses me is Beretta's kickoff system on these shotguns. You know, these 20 gauges with the kickoff on them, literally feel like shooting nothing. And I mean really, like no recoil at all. Beretta hit a home run with the kickoff system. And this is my wife's A400 right here, and I really like the, uh, the new kickoff design where it incorporates the recoil reducing mechanism. in uh, at the front of the stock, rather than at the butt, but both these systems work great. And these amazing shotguns literally have no recoil. You have to shoot one to see for yourself. So what you'll notice when I was shooting both guns off the bench and it didn't really seem to matter if you had a uh, uh, an inertia gun or the gas gun. You know, both of these guns, they're, you know, I'm comparing apples to apples here. They weigh about the same. They're shooting the exact same ammunition. The only difference uh, in them is one is a gas, is a top-of-the-line gas system, 
and one of them is at the top of the line inertia system. But what you saw in that video was both of these did such a good job at mitigating recoil because I wasn't holding on to the forearm when I was shooting them on the rest. I was basically free shooting them. And they you saw there was it wasn't bucking up off the front rest. I was getting just a, a little push back when I'd fire with both with both guns too. It was just that push back. And uh, I find this to be one of the great things about um, all semi-automatic guns, whether it's gas or inertia, is, you know, you get used to firing those over and unders. And when you fire them, you get that muzzle rise after you shoot. Even with a lot of pump actions, you get that muzzle rise. But with the semi-autos, you don't really get that. And it makes it great for bird shooting because you're, you don't lose your sight picture. You're always right there. You know, and it's that push back instead of up. So, you know, uh, kudos to Beretta and Benelli for making such great shotguns that mitigate muzzle rise and keep all of the recoil going straight back into the shoulder like it should. Okay, so one of the more interesting takeaways from this recoil test is the fact that both my wife and I felt that the 20-gauge uh, Beretta had way less recoil than the 20-gauge Benelli. But uh, a lot of that's probably attributed to the Beretta's kickoff system on the A400. Um, so, you know, we moved up and brought out the 12-gauges uh, you know, my Benelli 12 gauge and then uh, my Beretta A300 12 gauge. And once again, in that test, we both felt that the Beretta had a lot less recoil than the Benelli did. And uh, what's even weirder was my wife commented that she thought that that Beretta A300 12 gauge actually had less recoil than the Benelli 20 gauge. It's, I thought that was odd uh, to me. They felt about the same, and that's a testament to the Beretta, where, you know, they're, a Beretta 12-gauge feels like you're shooting a Benelli 20-gauge. Um, but you also have to bear in mind that uh, when you move up to 12-gauge, you're also shooting a heavier gun, and when you add weight to guns, that also uh, mitigates the effects of recoil felt to the shooter. So... Um, you know that uh, 12 gauge is probably a good pound and a half heavier than these 20 gauges we're reviewing right now. But in general, I'll, I'll call this myth confirmed. Um, the uh, Beretta gas guns do indeed recoil less than the Benelli inertia guns. It's accepted common knowledge among the shotgun community that inertia guns have a nice slim foregrip and that gas guns have a fat, uncomfortable foregrip because they need to house that gas system inside here. But is this actually true? I don't really know, but uh, I'm going to measure our test guns and find out. So I broke out the digital calipers and, uh, you know, these are good certified digital calipers and we're going to uh, take measurements on these uh, forends to see which one has the slimmer profile. And uh, we'll start with the uh, Beretta here, I guess, because it's expected to lose because it's a gas gun. And uh, we'll get height first. We'll do height and width. And it looks like, I guess we could do it where people normally grab maybe the middle of the stock. Okay. And the height there is 2.61 inches. 2.61 inches. Now let's check the height on uh, the Benelli. We'll go right in the middle like we did on the Beretta. Two 
2.53. So, man, very, very minuscule. Very minuscule. God, not much at all. Almost the same, but uh, I guess you could say that the uh, on total height, the Benelli won, but I think it won on the height because I think this rib is higher. I think what I, that's what I'm getting out of it, but, uh, you know, who knows? They're almost the same. That actually really surprised me. I expected the uh, Beretta to be a lot fatter because it houses the gas system. So let's get width on these. We'll go back to the uh, Beretta. Let's see how fat this bad boy is with the gas system in it. Go right in the middle here. One point six zero or one point yeah, basically one point six zero inches. Okay, so let's go to the Benelli. Let's see how skinny this Benelli inertia gun is. So again, we'll go right in the middle there. Butt that up nice and tight right there. One point six zero nine. Wow. You know, basically they're the same, but the uh, the Beretta is actually a hair slimmer. So overall, I'd say this myth is busted. Gas guns are not heavy, clunky, oversized guns anymore. They're actually on par with the best inertia guns. So... Once again, credit to Beretta for making a great gas gun. Very light, very compact. Okay, this rumor is only half true in my opinion. Yes, if you shake the Benelli, Benelli's are pretty loud. But, you have to shake it pretty vigorously for it to be loud enough to uh, scare birds, in my opinion. But uh, really, what hunter is out in the field using their shotgun like a shake weight? When you carry the Benelli during normal hunting conditions, it's just as quiet as any other semi-auto shotgun. So to me, this is really a non-issue. Both of these guns have great trigger pull in my opinion. And uh, here's some trigger pull measurements for reference. So first we're gonna test the trigger pull on the Benelli. Okay. And uh, that's just over five and a half pounds. Just over five and a half. So let's try that again. Do it one more time. Just in case that was a fluke. Okay, ready? Here we go. Okay, you can see basically the same thing, about uh, five and three quarter pounds, so it's well under a six pound trigger, so that's pretty damn good. Now let's test out the trigger on the Beretta A400. Exactly five pounds. That's exactly five pounds. Let's uh, go ahead and do that again. Try that one more time. Five pounds again. Actually just a hair under five pounds. So what a great trigger. Looks like the... Uh, 
the Beretta's trigger is about a half to three quarters of a pound lighter than the Benelli. And, uh, but honestly, I think both triggers are great. It's said that a shotgun trigger should be lighter than the weight of the shotgun. And both these manufacturers accomplish that with, uh, with really light Upland shotguns as well. You know, both triggers have very little creep and take up as well. They're, they're both fine triggers, but be mindful that when you get into the cheaper Beretta rifle, like the A300, or the budget Benelli's like the Stogers, the quality of the trigger diminishes greatly. And now we're gonna talk about price. Um, you know, in this comparison I did, I really tried to keep it an apples to apples comparison. And I really wasn't looking at price points. I was looking at shotguns that were extremely similar to each other, you know, uh, out of the Benelli and the Beretta line. And I chose the A400 and the Monofiltro for that. And, uh, you know, this A400 cost me about $300 more than this Monofiltro cost. So this was more expensive, uh, albeit it does have the kickoff system on it. You know, uh, whether or not that's worth, uh, you know, in a nicer finish too, I think. It's also got a nicer finish. But if that nicer finish and the kickoff system is worth that $300 to you, you know, spend it. Also be mindful that both of these models come in more expensive models. You could get the A400 Upland, and I think there's another uh, A400 Explore Action that's up in price as well. And the Monofeltro, you know, you can get the Monofeltro uh, Silvers. You could get the uh, really expensive um, Custom Shop Monofeltros from Benelli. I think there's about uh, four or five different, more expensive versions of this Monofeltro that Benelli put out. So, you know, the you can get up there, you know, pretty close to the $1,700 range with both of these shotguns. But... Uh, uh, in this particular survey, just be mindful that this Beretta is, of the two rifles we're reviewing today, this Beretta is $300 more than this Montefeltro. So keep that in mind throughout this review. You know, but also be mindful that the top tier Beretta autoloaders are not as expensive as the top tier Benelli autoloaders. You know, there's a lot of Benelli autoloading shotguns that go well over $2,000. I mean, you're in a good quality um, over and under range with a lot of the more expensive Benelli. So, you know, uh, the price range on both of these product lines really run the gauntlet from pretty expensive to very expensive. Isn't my wife's A400 Upland nice? What a beautiful gun, man. Beautiful gun. Now that we're talking about the loading and unloading segment of this video, I want you to know I will be using snap caps. I won't be using live rounds. The Beretta is the easiest semi-auto shotgun to load and unload, in my opinion. You know, there's no driving shells to load them into the magazine like you do with the Remington 1100. And there's no Benelli thumb involved with it. Uh, every Beretta semi-auto I've ever owned loads so smoothly and easily that you don't even think about it. You know, it just, uh, the shells just glide right in you know, with your thumb, and uh, after it glides right in, your thumb just gently pulls out of the lifter with absolutely no issues. Berettas are really easy to load. And unloading a Beretta semi-auto shotgun is also a breeze. The correct way to unload a semi-auto shotgun magazine tube is to push in the shell latch and unload them one at a time. 
just like that. This is safe because you're not cycling live rounds into the chamber to unload. And it's convenient because you can gently remove the unfired shells and place them in your ammo pouch while you're out hunting. You know, when upland hunting, I mean, I might be getting in and out of my truck all day trying different areas out. So being able to safely um, and easily unload the shotgun is very important to me. The Beretta shell latch is also super easy to get to, you know, and, and find with your finger and to press to unload shells. But there is one potential issue, you know, especially with new shooters. People who own Mossberg 930s, you know, have their infamous jam my gun button. You've probably heard of the jam my gun button. The Mossberg owners are always complaining about that. But unfortunately, many Beretta semi-autos are also capable of doing the same damn thing. Basically, if you press this release button on a closed bolt, this gun will try to dump all the shells that are in the magazine tube into the receiver and jam it. Let me watch. Closed bolt. The gun is now jammed. Don't know if you could see in there or not. It is now jammed. There's one and a half shells. In this feature was actually designed by Beretta to be a quick unload feature, but it's a horrible attribute that Beretta should immediately get rid of. You know, really, in my opinion, this is the only problem with this gun. You know, I personally, I never press the magazine release on a closed bolt, but I've had other people use my gun and accidentally do it, and it's a real pain in the ass when they do. So to clear this jam, if this does happen to you, you're going to have to hold the bolt back. And what I do is I use my middle finger and I stick it in the ejection port and I push the back shell down so I, till I could feel the lip on the front shell. And uh, I just kind of uh, push it back into the magazine tube till I hear a click and it clears. Then I release the bolt. There's one in the chamber and uh, there's one in the magazine tube and your malfunction is cleared. So, yeah, you know, never hit this, never hit this magazine release button on a closed bolt. But I would actually, if you own a Beretta, I do it a few times at home so you can practice clearing out that malfunction just in case you accidentally hit this button on a closed bolt or somebody borrows your rifle and does it like that's what usually ends up happening with me. So now that you're really soured on the Beretta issue, let's dive right into the Benelli. In my opinion, Benelli's are the worst semi-auto shotguns to load and unload ever invented. On every Benelli I've ever owned, you really have to push to get those shells into the magazine tube. They don't just glide in like uh, other brands of repeating shotguns. You know, I've seen kids whose dads bought them Benelli's and uh, the kids couldn't even load their own shotguns because they lacked the finger and thumb strength to uh, push the shells into the magazine. And then we move on to the famous Benelli thumb, that most painful and annoying of experiences that uh, happens when you try to top off your magazine in the heat of the moment while you're out hunting. The dreaded Benelli thumb happens when you load a shell into the magazine tube. If you put your thumb or thumbnail a little too far into the magazine tube and try to pull it out, the lifter will come down and pinch your thumb as you're trying to pull it out. You know, some Benelli's are worse than others. This uh, 20 gauge Montefeltro isn't that bad, but my M2 will bite the shit out of you if you don't remember to load it with perfect technique. You know, uh, Benelli thumb can actually be pretty damn painful, trust me. 
If you end up owning a Benelli that bites your thumb, you basically have two options. You can use a perfect loading technique every time you put a shell into the magazine, which basically consists of pushing it straight in without uh, letting your thumb cross the plane between the end of the magazine tube and the, in, and the, the inner portion of the magazine tube. You know, or you could do like the competition shooters and a lot of waterfowl hunters do and get a modified or aftermarket shell lifter. I plan on eventually doing that for my M2. You know, why Benelli hasn't modified the lifter design on this after so many years of this problem is probably one of the great mysteries of the universe. So there's guys out there running around with band-aids on their thumbs every time they use their $2,000 semi-automatic Benelli's. And if you thought loading the Benelli was the only issue, well, I got news for you. What do you want to properly unload it? You know, Benelli's manual and even their engineers instruct you to depress the uh, shell carrier latch to remove shells one by one from the magazine tube. You know, this is the proper and safest way to unload. That's why they recommend it. But uh, this sounds great, and it is the safest and best way to unload a shotgun magazine tube, but there's a big problem. It's almost impossible on a lot of Benelli's to unload the uh, shotgun this way. You know, that shell carrier latch in there is so damn small and stiff that it's nearly impossible on a lot of Benelli's to depress it with a live shell in the magazine. So most Benelli owners find it impossible to unload their shotgun this way. I mean, on my 12-gauge Monty, there's no way in hell I can unload like that. With my 20-gauge Monty, I could just, you know, if I basically put my thumb on the outside of the receiver here and my middle finger on the inside and just really torque down on it, I can actually get the shell latch to, to give a little bit and remove shells one by one. But... Uh, it's a real pain in the ass, and uh, my M2 is like that too. My Super Black Eagle was like that, so seems to be a problem across most of their product lines. So most Benelli owners out there are forced to manually cycle all of their shells out of the gun. That's right. Most Benelli owners need to chamber live rounds in order to unload them. You know, if this sounds stupid, it's because it is stupid. Also be mindful of another issue with some Benelli's. After you uh, uh, pop a shell into the magazine right there, let me see if I can uh, use a snap cap here. When you're loading a shell, don't slowly ease the bolt forward. Don't do that with the Benelli. You know, I, I know there's times where you'll be driving to a hunting area and you'll see a covey of quail out off the side of the road. So you pull over your truck, quietly slide out of it. Um, you know, try to silently load your shotgun so you can sneak up on those birds. But uh, don't do this with the Benelli because this can induce a condition known as the Benelli click. The Benelli click happens when the bolt doesn't fully rotate into battery. Because remember, this is a rotating bolt. And uh, when you pull the trigger, the hammer hits the bolt body instead of the firing pin. And it goes click instead of blunt bang. That's why they call it uh, the Benelli click. You know, uh, when, when you load a Benelli... You need to use this bolt release button. You know, uh, you need to hit that bolt release button and let the bolt fly forward under full spring tension so it properly goes into battery every time. So never baby the bolt on a Benelli forward to load the gun. And I'll try to give you a close-up of that right here. See, it's in battery right now. Watch. It's out of battery right now. See, if I pull the trigger on this, this 
Shotgun is not going to fire. Watch, I'll put it back into battery. Now it's in battery. Now it's out of battery. In battery, out of battery. So don't baby this bolt. Beretta and Benelli both use the same cross bolt style safety, but uh, they place them differently. Benelli does what most repeating shotgun manufacturers have done since their inception. They put the safety tucked in the back of the trigger guard back here. You know, this makes it easy for hunters and shooters who have that muscle memory from using different manufacturer shotguns and uh, for many shooters, the placement of the Benelli safety feels just right. Beretta, on the other hand, bucked the trend of the industry and placed their safeties on their modern autoloaders at the front of the trigger guard. You know, early Berettas like the 1200 had the safety located at the back of the trigger guard, but they moved the safety to the front of the trigger guard in the uh, 1990s with the introduction of the Model 390. You see, in the 1990s, firearms training techniques and safety awareness made huge strides. You know, really, there was little to no former, uh, formal firearm training available to civilians and the public, you know, until the 1990s. And even police and military had only basic training in firearm tactics and safety. By the early 90s, uh, civilian firearm training schools were popping up everywhere by the hundreds. And many states actually started requiring hunters to take safety courses for the first time. This prompted the universal practice and interpretation of uh, Jeff Cooper's firearm rule number three and ushered us into the modern age of trigger discipline. You know, people from civilians to Navy SEALs in this time were taught to keep their finger extended while handling a firearm. You know, what many firearms instructors called the natural limit of extension. This was to prevent an accidental discharge from the uh, physiological condition known as sympathetic grip. You know, it's basically, look it up if you've never heard it before. So during this time of uh, firearm spiritual awakenings, Beretta was listening and moved their safeties to the front of the trigger guard so the user can easy, easily operate the safety with an extended trigger finger. That easy. So whether you like your safety in front of or behind the trigger guard is just a matter of personal preference. I personally like the Beretta safety better because... I always keep my shotgun on safe until I see birds and, you know, it lets me get off shots faster because I don't have to change my grip on the shotgun or change my finger position in order to get off a quick shot. It's basically, I'm already like this. Bam. You know, but... Some children... And women and maybe even smaller statured men prefer the Benelli safety because their fingers are too short to reach the front safety on the Beretta without loosening up their grip and coming forward. So they prefer the safety back here because their fingers are too short. So that's a huge plus for the Benelli. Fit and finish is one area you almost always get what you pay for. You know, these two shotguns have absolutely excellent fit and finish on them, but you're going to pay $1,000 or more to get that. If you move down to Beretta's Bargain A300 shotgun or to Benelli's Stoger line or even the cheaper Frankie's, 
you get guns with noticeably worse fit and finish. You know, when firearm manufacturers make a budget line of guns, they always cut corners on the fit and finish first. You know, most of these cheaper guns have um, inexpensive finishes on them that won't last long under hard use. You know, many don't have chrome lining where it needs it. Many have rough edges, unattended tool marks, and loose fitting parts. So, you know, here's an insider tip. If you buy one of these bargain model shotguns, always get the camo pattern ones. You know, the camo dip on these guns will actually protect the surface of the gun better than the cheap finish will. I think this video proved that a lot of the common knowledge in the shotgun world is really just conjecture. No uh, Beretta, Benelli, or any other semi-auto shotgun is perfect. None of them are. They all have their quirks and design flaws, in my opinion. And, you know, before we go any further with this conclusion, I'm positive I'm going to have dozens and dozens of guys who don't even watch this video just see the title, Beretta versus Benelli, and they're going to post it in there, over and under is better, over and under is better. I'm going to get those, and you know what, I'll probably delete most of them and ignore them, and it, the older I get, the less I feed the trolls on the internet, so, but I'll tell you from a lot of experience out there, when you're out in the field trying to drop dubs flying 55 miles an hour, or you're hiking for hours out in the hills without a dog, trying to take advantage of every single quail flush you can because you're not running into that many birds. The semi-auto shotgun is the best tool for the job. You know, also those with past injuries really appreciate the great reduction in recoil you get from a semi-auto shotgun. You know, luckily modern semi-autos are more reliable and easier to maintain than they've ever been in their history. I hope you appreciate the fact that I tried to do a real apples to apples comparison by comparing two shotguns that are extremely similar to each other. And quite honestly, when I'm out upland hunting, you know, it really doesn't matter to me whether I'm uh, shooting the uh, Beretta or the Benelli, you know, they both perform really well as long as you have a shotgun that's uh, designed and well suited for upland hunting. So who won this Beretta versus Benelli showdown? Honestly, that's up to you. You know, I left out the single most important attribute of selecting the right shotgun, shotgun and uh, that's how it fits. It's actually how it fits you. You know, you're going to shoot lousy with any shotgun that doesn't fit you right and doesn't point naturally. Remember, except for when turkey hunting, you don't aim a shotgun, you point it. So it has to fit right. So after everything you saw in this video, it's actually the individual fit of the shotgun that matters most. You know, I really love the uh, A400 Explorer action for upland hunting. I love the safety on it. I love the ease of loading and unloading. And I love the way it points for me on those low flushing birds. You know, but for waterfowl, I really love my old Benelli M2. You know, that's my go-to gun for waterfowl. You know, to me, nothing is more reliable in wet, muddy conditions than that gun. And it points perfectly when I'm swinging the gun high at waterfowl. So it's the fit of the gun that really matters. So in the end, the Beretta versus Benelli thing isn't a Ford versus Chevy argument at all. It's more like a tacos versus hamburgers argument where both are awesome, but I like tacos better. Well, I hope you found this video informative and at least slightly entertaining. While making this video and measuring things for myself, I actually learned some things that I didn't know before. So 
Thank you for taking this journey with me. You can contact me with any questions or comments at DesertDogOutdoors at gmail.com. That's DesertDogOutdoors at gmail.com. Well, as always, thank you for watching this video and enjoying my channel, and good hunting. Stop. I see what you're doing. I know exactly what you're doing. You're going down there to the comment section and you're going to comment on how you like the SX4 better or you like the Versamax better or God forbid you like the Browning Maxis better. This video is a Beretta versus Benelli video. It has nothing to do with Winchester or Remington or Browning. I know what you're doing. You're going to go down there and you're going to comment. Don't do it.